In this video, we will talk about the step of estimating the trend. And we will use linear regression. Linear regression is certainly something that I'm sure everyone is familiar with. It might make you scared, but I hate to say it, linear regression is really useful. And, and honestly, we just have Excel and computers to do the linear regression for us. We don't have to do it by hand. So there's nothing to be scared of here. So in the last video, what we did was we took the original data and we divided it by the seasonal indexes to get the deseasonalized data. So we have the original sales numbers here in this column, and then we have the deseasonalized numbers here in this column. And as I also showed in the last video in my very, very crudely and poorly and perhaps inaccurately drawn graph here, the, the line that's supposed to be in green, at least it's green to me, uh, shows the original sales numbers, and then the, the tighter orange line shows the deseasonalized numbers. And the whole reason for deseasonalizing is so that we can get a linear regression that we can have more confidence in. So I've done the linear regression on the deseasonalized data, and that's the whole point of what we're trying to do here. I will show you in a minute how things are different if we had done, or I did, for example, the linear regression on the original deseasonalized, sorry, the original data. So we do a, de a linear regression on the deseasonalized data. Um, we do it on the deseasonalized data. What do we get? We get that y is equal to 101.0 plus 5.21 times t. So this is what you get from a linear regression. You get an intercept and you get a slope. And here, time is our variable, our independent variable. So you do that linear regression, or that's what I got. If you do the linear regression on original data, that's a, that's a G. What do we get? Well, we get that Y is equal to 103.9 plus 4.27 times T. So if you look at those numbers, you compare them side by side, they don't really seem very different. Here we got an intercept of 101. Here we got an intercept of basically 104. So they're a little bit different, but not very much different really. And then here we get a, a slope of 4.3 and here we got a slope of 4.2. And it's true those numbers are fairly close to each other. But if you think about it on a percentage basis, this is one unit, one unit bigger compared to four. That's, it's almost 25% faster growth rate. So even though the numbers look similar, they're telling a very different story. So it's important that we know which of those is the correct story. And I'm gonna argue that it's from using the deseasonalized data. And then there's another thing that you may remember, you may have blocked out from your studies of linear regression. And that is we have something called an R squared value, which tells us the percentage of changes in Y that are explained by changes in, in the uh, independent variable. So, when we do it on the deseasonalized data, we get an R squared value of 0 0.87. R squared values can only go as high as one. And so to get an R squared value that's basically 0 0.9, that is a very high degree of correlation. When we do the linear regression on the original data, we get an R squared value of 0 0.18, not quite two. So the R squared value is four and a half times higher. Does that mean this data is four and a half times better? I wouldn't go that far, but I have a lot more confidence in this linear regression that I got from the deseasonalized data compared to the one that we would have gotten if you would have done this. And you shouldn't do this, ignore this. Do not do this. Here's my red marker, do not do not do a linear regression on the original data. Do your linear regression on the deseasonalized data. That's the whole point of computing the deseasonalized data. We'll get a linear regression that we have a lot more confidence in 
because the R squared value is so much higher. I hope this has been useful.